And uh, uh, as you mentioned, like your kids are a little bit older, so um, they're in, they're into sports. And how's that? Because like you're, as I as I would say, you're a big sports fan. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, my my son, he my oldest, he's into into sports, but he he doesn't play. He played basketball in high school and uh -huh. little football and stuff, but not like going super hard with it. Right. And I don't know about my my, my youngest son. He. Um, you know, he's topsy-turvy. He's playing guitar right now, taking guitar lessons. Mm -hmm. About to get him piano lessons, too. So he's really into the music. And my daughter, she, she like, plays lacrosse and shit. So oh, all right. it's, all, it's all good. <laughs> it's good. Um, let's come back to the album. Uh, as I said, my favorite song is uh, Dancing for a White Girl. How, how did this track happen? Who had the idea of doing this song? Well, me and Edda were overseas in Austria. Um, the album was pretty much finished. But uh, we were talking and we both agreed that we should just try to do one record that was that was out, a little bit outside the box, a little bit different. We were thinking like something kind of like Outkast would do, just something weird and maybe a fast little kind of strange beat. And that was the original idea. Um, and then when we got back home, um, I had... I had met um, this guy D.A. from the group Chester French. Um, he was going to be in New York. Um, I had him come by the studio. And I also had um, one of uh, our in-house producers, Pavarotti, come by to play beats, just see if we could come up with something. So we sat down for about an hour playing beats, and this particular beat stood out to me. You know, I looked over at DA, and he looked over at me, and we both kind of moving our heads like, I said, I think this is it. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, well, I said, I'm, for some reason, this is just, I, I feel like saying dancing like a white girl. That, that was the first thing that came. And when, as soon as I said that, he went off and started coming up with this whole hook thing. Yeah. So I laid down the Dancing Like a White Girl. He laid down the hook. And then uh, we emailed just that. We emailed it to Edo. And Edo was like, that's it. That's great. That's the record. Let's do it. He wrote his verse. I wrote my verse. Um, we laid the verses down, and the rest is history. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Uh, is that uh, I heard about the story. You guys were like, uh, I overheard that when you're talking about the Jamaican story. Uh, yeah. Who, who wants to talk about that? Who wants to tell the story? Um, Ace just showed it to me today, man. Um, it was just a wedding in, in Jamaica and a friend of DA's, right? A fan sent DA, um, you know, a YouTube clip of, of a wedding party, wedding reception where they were playing, dancing like a white girl. And you had, you know, moms and grandmoms and the bride and you know all the staff getting it in they was going real hard off it man and you know that's that's the type of song that 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 record is man it's a meant to be a fun record it's not poking fun at any particular music or you know people always think we got arterial motives with our stuff we just wanted to make something fun and do something that, that you wouldn't normally hear from ace and Edo. It's definitely something different. Um, so, uh, how's the album like uh, record selling wise going for you guys? Are you are you fine with it? Or? I mean, uh, obviously, I, first of all, I, don't, I never look at numbers. I don't know. I never know what's being sold. So okay. I'm just happy that we're on the road touring with it. We're selling CDs every night. Um, people are picking up the CD, and we know that it's moving forward in a positive direction. And bottom line is that the the word of mouth is that people like the album. That's the main thing. It's good to hear. So yeah. the numbers. <laughs> the numbers. The numbers are going good, man. We're at a we're at a good pace right now. Um, as long as we keep that up, I mean, we got about f probably four new videos coming out over the next two months. I would say um, we just shot a new video before we left That's to go to tour. Music. Yeah, that that's the second one. We just shot one for A's and E's. Um, before we left for this tour. So that'll be out like a little bit after Christmas, probably right around New Year's or something like that. We're shooting two videos while we're over here mm -hmm. in, in, in Europe. Um, and then we're doing a dancing video sometime in January. So, you know, I think, yeah, I think, I think, you know, a lot of, a lot of stuff, and, and we're doing one for the fans with Large Professor. So a lot of stuff will be out. We'll be making sure that people are knowing and keeping it in their minds. You know what I mean? That the record is new. Sounds very good to me. So, so uh, what's up with the future plans after this album? I mean, it just came out and you guys touring still, but are there any plans for the future? Well, the uh, second EMC album is definitely going to be coming. Sounds good. I think Edo's working on a solo joint, too. Mm -hmm. I can tell you.
Yeah, um, solo joint, you know, probably another uh, special teams album sometime next year or, you know, late next year because our, obviously our goal right now is the A&E record and to, you know, be out on the road and touring and promoting um, this this record as much as possible and, you know, squeezing it till there's nothing left in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the jar, you know, the can or whatever you want to call it. We're we going to work this record till, till the wheels fall off. Very good. Okay, guys, uh, thank you for taking the time and talking to us. It was a pleasure, as always. Okay, peace.